Also, I realized I only put it at 30 frames instead of 60 frames. Shoot. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's going to matter anyway. We're literally just talking for like two hours, so it's all good. Yep. But so. boy, 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 man, uh, I have a lot to talk about tonight. Specifically for uh. one thing in particular that completely caught me off guard as to why I was like... I could have sworn these episodes came out at least like Friday night or Saturday morning because that was always what I got every morning, you know, <laughs> yeah. and I'm thinking to myself, like, where is this show? Like, what, what happened to my show? And uh, then, of course, we got some announcements that we're definitely going to tackle upon because it's based on one of the shows uh, we've discussed. I don't know if you got the chance to watch the recent episode, though, did you? I did not. Oh, uh, yeah. I I'm not surprised, to be quite honest with you, given the circumstances that we're in right now. But, mm -hmm. like, yeah, it it's dumb. <laughs> it is ridiculous. Uh, just, just when you thought Kobe is Brian's death wasn't enough for, for this month, we entered January, now we come, we come across this bullshit. <laughs> oh, man, it ain't gonna stop anytime soon, buddy. It this is gonna be the thing that'll keep on going until the end of time, because... And this is this is gonna be uh, something I really want to discuss further because it's like there, there's so many layers of like wrong that's with what just happened these past couple of days with uh, Funimation and uh, you know interspecies reviewers, otherwise known mm -hmm. as Ishozuku reviewers, if I'm correct. So yes. we have a lot to get into, and uh, hopefully we'll do our best to tackle all the topics in the best way we can. And uh, right now, I'm just making sure that we are officially live and ready to go uh, yes. on on the social medias and whatnot. So let me just make sure I tweet all this stuff out and also send it to everybody else as well. All right. Uh, let me go and check over here while we're at it. No. All right. So while that's happening, how uh, have you been, by the way? Oh, I've been doing fine. Thank you so much for asking. I just came back from, like, uh, just eating and whatnot. So... That was a good time. <laughs> but dude, man, like, yeah, listen, man, uh, you can never go wrong during a cold day and have yourself some good soup, man. Uh, yes, yeah, definitely nothing wrong with that. Uh, how, how cold is it over there, by the way? Uh, it's like, snowing? It, it was, like, no, 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 it's not snowing. But what was funny to me oh. is that everybody was anticipating, like, the day to be pretty hot. And the first thing you feel in this morning when you're walking outside is just the frigid wind. <laughs> and it's so bad. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that, that caught me off guard right there. That's for sure. Uh, but, man, like... I, <laughs> I like I, like I mentioned like soup soup at any time during the cold weather is always a blessing to your body man especially because it helps you with the flu too so if you like to you know keep yourself nice and healthy throughout the winter time when everybody's during their uh their sick phase or their allergy phase or whatever phase it is that gets people sick this is the perfect thing to eat during this time man that's what doctors recommend anyway so mm -hmm. what about you buddy how have you been doctors recommend chef yrd chicken noodle soup <laughs> Chef Boyardee makes chicken noodle soup? When <laughs> this, this is news to my ears. What? No, well, uh, only only in a different world, I suppose. Oh, no, man. but um, <laughs> uh, other than that, I I'm doing pretty good myself. Now, unfortunately, um, because of uh, of college, I didn't really get enough time to catch up with some of these um, anime that I'm trying to watch. Like, I'm, um, like I, I was only able to watch the first episode of that uh, the defensive um. Uh, Th that defensive uh, girl anime in, in this um, isekai world. Oh, you know, oh, a sh sh what was it called? A uh, Shobudi or something like that? I forgot what it was nicknamed. Hold on, hold on. Let me see if I could find it. There's like a, yeah, yeah, a but, shortened version for it. Yeah, so I was only able to watch, watch the first episode, and that was actually like last week. <laughs> Damn. And um, I, I couldn't get to um, uh, Kibri Hands of Ice again either. Oh, Bofuri. Bofuri is called, by the way. Bofuri, okay. Yeah, yeah, the the, the uh, defense girl manga, uh, anime, <laughs> not manga. Yeah, <laughs> but continue on, buddy. Yeah, but other than that, I, I've been I've been doing pretty good. Just um, just been pretty busy, but uh, I'm doing um pretty well. Nice. Uh, you said you did you watch the science science one by any chance? This uh, yes, I did catch up with the science one and um, uh, various other anime. Of course, uh, we I we just I just couldn't catch up on the uh, the latest security reviewers. Back to the shit, Matisse. We're yeah, <laughs> you are really har har fiddly dee. Being a pirate is what it always seems, you I guess. Are a pirate. <laughs> Man, does that not suck? Because it's like we always consistently tell people, 
support the official release and then the official release are like screw that we doing something else instead and just dive themselves into like something completely different and it just it, it, it's horrible man i i, I hate it <laughs> i hate this man it, it's so bad yeah but i can somewhat understand where they're coming from uh, where they're coming from with this but we'll get into for the detail as we mentioned before yeah because like there, there's just so much wrong with this and once we get and once we get into it we'll we'll definitely uh tackle more we're just making sure if everything is running fine and dandy and it looks to be all good so uh let me just make sure i have this thing turned on properly as well because Obviously, uh, I assume the first topic we're going to talk about for tonight, anyways, is going to definitely be based on uh, Ishizoku reviewers or interspecies reviewers, however you want to go with it. So I also learned just the other day as well. Uh, yeah, and well, not necessarily just learned it, learned it, but more like, huh, right, this is also a thing that exists. Uh, mm -hmm. The uncensored version is a thing. <laughs> so yeah, the uncensored version is a thing. Oh uh, man, it's out there in certain science for those of you who want to do a little exploring. Yeah, but like, thanks to what happened though, I'm pretty confident everybody's gonna pretty much go and hunt for that, dude. Mm-hmm. But man, man, man. That, uh... <laughs> I have a lot of questions regarding that move. Yes, I do too. I'm just trying to find the image for it so I could like... Short, uh, <laughs> just, just an image at least, you know? So let me see if I can get an image around here for this. Yeah, uh, here. Do you uh, want me to help you out with that? Sure, that would be great. Just a simple image that, by the way, won't get my ass kicked <laughs> on Twitch if I post it. All right. Oh, so I I'm assuming the official poster won't work then. No, I, I found something else instead, actually, now, now that I think about it. All right, I'm going to use this image Ooh, instead. Okay. All right, yeah, I, I found a free image. <laughs> ah, shit, never mind. This image is a web image. God damn it. Okay, I'll throw that away. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. Let me just click uh, this just, one. Just uh, bear with us uh, for a little bit, you guys. Yeah, I mean, we can still talk about it while I'm still trying to grab this image, so it's all good. It's just yeah. more like, God damn, man, does this piss me off. All right, so yes. interspecies reviewers. Um, now, of course, we've talked about this beforehand, and in fact, uh, we've joked about this anime a lot, actually. You know, when mm -hmm. we first got the official announcement of this series... Uh, one of the big obvious things that we pointed out is just, dear God, this is going to be something that no one's going to like, is it? Because it's based around a bunch of dudes pretty much going to brothels, and, am I correct? Yeah, and what seems to be like a harem, a very yetchy anime. But... Exactly. And, uh, so... I mean, you're not wrong, it, it is, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But... Man, like, in terms of how this anime was structured, it was beautifully handled. Because yeah. Because it's not just all about, you know, the edginess, um, you know, and the, the many things are just wrong with this anime. But really, it, it's this anime is just genius in general. Yeah, it really does surprise me just how well this series, structure-wise or story-wise, is, well, structured. Because it's like... It's about these dudes, they go to brothels, and they review each and every single individual one, and what I love about it is that no two persons are alike, everybody has their own respective opinions, you know, mm -hmm. and throughout the three episodes that we've gotten so far, plus the fourth one that has now been, uh, now beginning the whole fan subbing era, um, you know, it, it's been a pretty it, to me this is my surprise anime of 2020 i i did not think i would like this anime in fact i joked around saying this is probably gonna be the worst anime of this era i was gonna i was gonna slap this anime to the likes of isekai <laughs> shit magician and that ragnarok anime that i talked about so much in the previous year so i was thinking that it was gonna go into that level of disgustingness and i mean Depending on how you are viewing certain genres, given that this is a harem, not, not necessarily a harem, but more so a etchy, you know, kind of series and whatnot, given all the lewdness and since we're going to brothels, of course, there's going to be a lot of that. Um, you know, you, you would not maybe enjoy it. it might not be your thing. But for those who do genuinely find, uh, you know, a good thing out of it, then yeah, you'll get a good kick out of it. I, I think this is my uh, guilty pleasure 
of 2020. <laughs> Yeah, okay, Gage, that image is illegal. Funny sense, oh shit. <laughs> oh, all right, uh, but go on, Evie. What, what do you got to say about this anime for yourself? All right, so yeah, again, you know, like just uh, pretty much everything that you pointed out. I initially thought that this was an anime that might be too edgy or too, or you know, you know, too, you know, yeah, pr- pretty much too edgy for us to fit our tastings because you know, especially when, when you look at the um, the official poster of this anime. You know, you see these two dudes surrounded by these harem, harem of women who happen to be like, uh, you know, brothel women. And you think to yourself, oh boy, this is just going to be like another high school DXD or um, probably going to be like, you know, like any other m- most fam- famously known edgy anime, right? But, yes. Yeah, and that's what you thought. And yeah, I was with you there. I thought, I would, I thought it would have been fun to, you know, joke around with this anime had it not been as, you know, as good as we thought it was. But... Man, you know, just coming into these first episodes, um, I'm actually very glad that we were in really wrong on this and changed our views to a complete 180 yeah. about this anime. It's one of those animes that I guess you could say, uh, first of all, A, don't ever judge a book by its cover. And I mean nope. literally because that cover <laughs> was woo! <laughs> mm-hmm. But, like, aside from that... I mean, this one is like me and the boys anime kind of thing. You know what I mean? This was this was such a good anime to just joke around in terms of actually reviewing it and whatnot. Because like we're reviewing reviewers reviewing their kind of thing, you know, mm-hmm. and how they do it. And I'm like, man, oh man, I'm gonna love every single week on this. It's gonna be great. I can't wait to see the shenanigans they're gonna pull off. Because despite the etchiness that you see in this show. You cannot deny how creative it is, man. It is how so creative with some of the things they pull off. Definitely, and if there's anything, and if there's uh, anything that uh, get me to stick around, it has to be the comedy. Because, man, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. This, like the comedy, the way they've handled the comedy is like almost Konosuba tier level of comedy. Yeah, oh my god, though, my favorite one has to have been from last week's episode, which was, like, the whole gender bender episode. And oh god, yeah. <laughs> they, they talked about, like, how when the guys turn into girls, they can't exactly leave the hotel that they are in. And the reason why is because if they do, they can start pulling off stunts, like, you know, going to a girl-exclusive bathing spot and just, you know, pretty much glaring at yeah. all the ladies <laughs> that are walking by nude. But, mm-hmm. of course, the the other story about saying you can do romance stuff while still as a girl and ha- do the thing during the nighttime, and then you wake up this morning and you find out that chick that you've been banging was a dude all along, you're like, good lord, I felt bad for that bear guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Man. He didn't deserve that fate. I'm sorry. <laughs> This poor lad, and it did stuff like that that that, that spread out throughout this series, and it's it's some of the most like <laughs> it, it, it's humor that's not forced. It feels right, and it works with what this series is about. You know, right? Yeah, it, it it just blends well with the entire concept of this anime. Like, you know, it doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel out of place. It was just um, the the right handling. Exactly. Of And I loved every bit of it. And that's why, like I mentioned to you guys in the chat, you know, it's so great because it's like, you don't really find nothing wrong with it. It's just more, just chill, relax kind of thing. Yes, it's going to be etching. Yes, you don't want to play this while you're outside in the streets, you know. But it's like, Mm -hmm. it's a guilty pleasure anime. I mean, we've all had our guilty pleasure anime. I mean, High School DXT, as we mentioned beforehand, that, uh, you know. Last year with the uh, Isekai Mom anime. Oh, dude, they, they, well, I mean, that, yeah, that, <laughs> that too as well, I guess. You know, there, there are things like that that are spread out throughout the years, and we, we enjoy them because they're fun. They're, they're not meant, they're not going to hurt nobody, right? It's literally just digital stuff. Like, nobody's getting hurt out of this, unless you're sensitive and, and there's that. But, like, aside from that, you're always going to find some form of enjoyment within this uh within these genres you know it is etchy they tell you straight off the bat it's etchy well at least some of us were told that uh (laughs) that this was an etchy anime because 
Funimation, I don't think they knew about this anime at all whatsoever, man. Which, which begs the question, why? Yes. Why did it took them that long to realize what the fuck they were handling with? Dude, I saw episode 4, by the way. Episode 4, I was like, oh god. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay, look, I haven't seen the episode, but it, it's a somewhat of a follow-up in terms of what kind of occurs in, from, you know, in episode 4. No, 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 because, like, even then, like, episode 3, I mean, like, you see episode 3, and that one is its own self hell. Like, for un for the censored version, like, that's the first episode that's like, hey, we have some scenes that you can't see, you know, so please enjoy the audio without the visuals. You remember that, right? If you've seen the yeah, censored version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a thing right there. Uh, so, I, I, I don't know what it is, because, like, look, they, they got subbing. They even got a dub for the first episode, and hell, the second episode was already dubbed to go out. Mm -hmm. It was ready to go. It was yeah, right then and there. Yeah, which is something I actually didn't knew, by the way. I actually didn't knew that there was a, a dub version of uh, this anime. Yeah, because like I think it took two weeks until you got the first episode of the dub. Mm -hmm. So okay. that, that's, that's the thing, you know. But man, it's like... Okay, so I, I guess the first thing we should probably do is uh, read the official, well, quote-unquote, official statement by Funimation because they haven't actually made it official yet. They've only responded, I think, to like an email or something, and Funimation hasn't really come out yet to really go into further details about what has happened mm -hmm. to, you know, th this series, to uh, Ishizuka reviewers. So let's get to it then. So... According to what I'm reading here, uh, somebody emailed them talking about this series and they got a response back by the Funimation uh, support that states, Hello Funimation user, thank you for contacting Funimation support. We appreciate your business. After careful consideration, the series, being of course interspecies reviewers, was removed from the service as it falls outside of our standards. We have the utmost respect for our creators, so rather than substantially alter the content, we felt taking it down was the most respectful choice. Please let us know if you have any other questions or concerns. Thank you. Funimation support. Alright, and that was the response to somebody mm -hmm. emailing Funimation support staff. Funimation, yeah. I don't think, has came out themselves to straight out tell you, oh, we're just completely wiping it out from our, uh, you know, from our system, you know, mm -hmm. from the digital service and whatnot. And th this is where the problem lies, man. And I guess we'll get into that in just a bit. But, like, uh, for starters, let's begin with the first question. Evie, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Uh, repeat the question you you uh, cut off for me. All right, what 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 is going on here? Why is this even happening? How did how did Funimation take this series, acquire the licensing rights for this series, and not realize what they're getting their hands into? Mm -hmm. How did they not see that this was gonna be what it's about? Like literally. The trailer itself told you what you're going to get yourself into. And Funimation was like, yeah, that's definitely our standards. Let, let's acquire it. And then three episodes later, you decide to go and, oh, <laughs> oh, God, never mind. So we're just going to completely wipe it out. There's just so many, so many weird decisions that Funimation had made just now. It's like, did, did you guys not even like look into it? Did you guys just acquire this licensing rights because it's like, hey, let's just have another thing to add to our catalog and not really look into the details about what this series is about, the creator, the the, uh, the studio, you know, the staff, etc., the plot. Like, the plot itself, like, just straight out tells you, oh, by the way, there's this etchy, you know, shenanigans you're going to get into. Like, mm -hmm. it's just so weird that Funimation acquired something without really looking into the details about what this series is all about, but, like... Evie, like, what do you think about this whole mess that's been going down? Like, j just yeah. share your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, I'm basically having the same question as you two. Like, you know, we're already three, well, well no, as of today, 
we're already into one full month since the airing of Ish Isuzuki Reviewers. And up until today, Funimation de 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 decided to make this interesting approach and decided to quietly, because, uh, you know, as you mentioned before, Funimation haven't made like an official statement, right? Um, they quietly removed interspecies reviewers from its streaming service. And, and look, I'll, look, I'll say this much. If Funimation has done this from the get-go, and I mean before its debut, I would have been completely fine with that. But the problem lies was that they've done it one month too late. And that in itself already caused some controversy because a lot of people, they're not really like, okay, while it is understand, well, it, it is understandable as to where Funimation is coming from with this move, you know, the fact that they're doing this so late, that, that raises a, a lot of eyebrows for the people who are actually enjoying this show. Because now they, they had to surf the internet and they got to look up these anime sites, which, you know, is illegal. Most, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it, it's just a very questionable move. And again, if Funimation had done this from the get go, um, I would have been completely fine with that. But I think it's the wrong move for them to actually. Uh, remove uh, interspecies reviewers from the streaming service right now. You know. Yeah. He, this is this is also you got to understand as well, and this applies to like the viewers and even somebody who brought this up right now. You know, feel bad for the people who had to work on this series, who had to put their time aside because they were uh, given you know the uh the job to work on a series that maybe lasts only 12 to 13 episodes people have mm -hmm. time taken out to go and work on this series because it's their job you know what i mean mm -hmm. and like not even a day before the next episode comes out these people are getting ready to work on the next episode and whatnot well, Pam, Funimation comes out, tells you, by the way, you, the subbers, because I'm assuming that Funimation probably gets, like, contact, uh, or just, like, uh, you know, all the contacts and whatnot. Contracts, I should say. Contracts. Mm -hmm. Like, contracts to each individual subber and whatnot to work on a series. They're jobless now for a while. Because they were given a contract that's supposed to help them work on this one particular series. You know what I mean? Everybody mm -hmm. has their own respective job to do, and this is what they were given the job to do. And it's like Funimation, you know, a full month in, these people already got adjusted to what they're into, and now is just snatched away. And that doesn't even include the dub casting as well. You know, Evie, you just brought up the point that there's an official dub now, and guess what? Mm -hmm. That's also completely removed as well. So it's like. Yeah. It's just so dumb. It's like th this wasn't even thought out fully at all whatsoever. It's more they were like, okay, we got this series. Let's try to make it a thing. Oh my god, three episodes in. Let's just kick the can and throw it away. Yeah, it's like, you know, they... It's sounding to... Yeah, so just literally, like, because they didn't know what with, with, what, with what they were dealing with, they, you know... And on, they didn't really take the time to actually review the uh, some of these animes that were upcoming, and you know, make the final decision from there whether or not they want to put this into the streaming service. Because again, as I mentioned before, you know, had they realized what this anime would be about, um, you know, and if they, you know, they could have at least left it out, and I would and I would have been fine with that because, you know, like you look at um. Some of the past seasons of anime, um, I believe it was summer of 2019 was when Beastars was um, pre uh, premiered. Yeah, last year yeah. was when Beastars came out. And then, of course, 2020, we're going to yeah. be getting it for here in the U.S. Yeah, so, you know, the fact that none of the streaming services like Crunchyroll, VRV, and Funimation didn't have it on their streaming services. It's like, okay, well, that's unfortunate, but that's fine. We could go ahead and, um, you know, look up other sites illegally to uh, uh, to watch the series, right? Yes. So I, so you know, it's just you know, again, why do they have to put it in the streaming services to begin with? Just leave it out, and you know, and it would be just as controversial, and they wouldn't have to uh, splash their money on these contracts to hire these people to do the dubbing voices. Exactly. You committed. You already put a full month in. Don't just 
back out after a month of working on this series after getting contracts for individual people to work on the subbing of this show and then of course going out of your way to create a dub for this said show which by the way now only one episode exists despite there actually being confirmed that there was a second one already in the works and then just straight up nope let's just completely get rid of it axe it out it, and it's a loose it's a loose loose uh, decision right there exactly no. nobody wins no one wins in this situation the workers they're jobless the people that staff that were working on this they're jobless piracy is now and going to become skyrocketing up and people are going to you know right against what funimation did yes it's an edgy series but you guys got to understand something this is the most important thing too and this is something that i think more people will begin to understand regarding streaming services they mm -hmm. can take away anything whenever they want and then there will be no official way to either support that track or whatever you know that's going to be available unless you right. get the physical thing and the only way to do that if you want to support a physical copy of this thing is to probably import this said series from japan and get it over here mm -hmm. you know Th yeah that, that that is the very unfortunate part about this whole thing it's like you, you know like not that not that even long ago um uh you know we already got the full opening and the full ending i believe for this for this anime right yeah of course so you know, it, it was just recently and you know you're you're one of the few people that ended up buying the the release and now that you know for the people who want who are looking forward to you know to buy the soundtracks and find some other ways to support these series now that Funimation did this there's it's you know they gotta take some greater length of you know some greater lengths to you know to even support it so this yeah just that this decision that didn't really work out for neither the fans nor themselves no and i feel bad for the creator too you know oh, the, the, the the series creator yeah. of this the studio who made this anime who were thinking that okay now this show would probably be you know at least be seen by other people out there outside of japan you know mm -hmm. and like now it's like yeah we're gonna still see it unfortunately the only way for us to see this series is through piracy which is of course never something no one would ever want to do because you always want to support the official release but when shit mm -hmm. like this happens it it comes to a situation where it's like nobody wins man no one no. not the fans not the creators not the people slash staff working on this series no one wins and for that yeah. it, it, it aggravates me so much man you know and mm -hmm. like and the biggest thing about it all the biggest sin as you just pointed out evie this thing already has been a month now out for a month they've already worked on this and just like that yeah snap away and it's like Funimation I'm, I'm like thinking I'm pretty confident you have like other anime shows under your belt that could probably be right in the same rankings as um, Eastern Species reviewers in terms of like the etchiness that you pull off like isn't High School DXD like one of their shows that they acquired Yes, uh, yes, uh, High School DXC, um, and I'm also looking at some of the other anime that um, the same studio, Passion, has also made. Um, you know, you also got Rail Wars as well, High School DXD, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, the, the, like at least some, you know, these two well known animes. And no, look, mind you, uh, because um, I, I talk about this with one of my friends. I, I'm not. I'm not saying that Asian security reviewers is like High School DXD, nor Rare Wars, or any of the other similar um, edgy animes. We're not comparing them in any way, but at least when it comes to meeting the standards, you know. Yeah, like what? What, what the hell does meeting our standards even mean? That's so vague. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. So it's like, you know, one makes these other series an exempt from not meeting their standards, like. Yeah. I see no difference, barely. Uh, until Funimation decides to come out and straight up say as to the reasoning, the full reasoning behind the takedown of this, we won't know. And we don't even know if Funimation will ever decide to talk about it. Will they just try to keep it and brush it to the side like as if they never actually acquired the rights? Or it's already yeah, going to come up well, front and say something. 
Yeah, and you know Funimation has had their own fair share of controversies before. Uh, I mean, yeah, like, you know, well, not necessarily the Funimation studio, but like the voice actors that are also with them, you know what I mean? Like with oh, the yeah. whole Goku thing getting leaked and whatnot about like how they voice certain things and then that, that thing was very uh, insulting, racist at, even at some points and whatnot. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, it's just it's just dumb, man. But yeah, as uh, Ken Lizard says, they, yeah, they're probably going to try to keep quiet. They're going to try to brush it off to the side. But man, I'm looking at the Funimation Twitter account and I'm looking through their uh, some of their most recent tweets. And like n- nothing, so- they just um, you know, just suddenly just setting that aside, like as if nothing ever happened. Yeah, but the thing that is happening though is that fans are coming out and pretty much yeah, talking to that. them, saying, "Hey, what the hell are you do, buddy? Give us back our interspecies reviewers, cowards!" You know. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm, yeah, I- I'm sorry, man. It- it's it's shit like this that makes it hard for me to support any streaming service especially when there's like a dozen i mean you got verve you got crunchyroll you got funimation you got anime lab you got like all these different variety of streaming service hell netflix is starting to join in by making some netflix exclusive anime there you know like with uh, b stars uh the new one that's involving trigger studio which i'm super excited for uh you know uh, but, what was it? uh shoot what was the other one the, the one with the panda <laughs> you know uh, but yeah at, at least out of the streaming bunches you know um funimation isn't really a, setting a good example of themselves and not really setting a good example of people who are interpreting these anime streaming services yeah because you know just you know just because of what uh funimation just did right now they're probably gonna think that the same case could happen with crunchyroll and you know these other streaming sites so yeah, it's just um, it, it's just why it's just very unfortunate that Funimation. Look, mind you, I do have a Funimation account and I am paying for their services monthly. And it's just that, you know, ugh, it's like they, you know, don't be surprised if some people decide to retract their their um their accounts with Funimation because of this. Yeah, people are probably gonna do it. You never know. But dude, it it, it it's just. Man, I, I'm just not a big fan of this. They're keeping quiet. Uh, uh, They're brushing it to the side. Yeah. Okay, now, KG, let me tell you this. If Funimation did decide to not stream Ishizuki reviewers from the beginning, will you be okay with that? Like, it's like, okay, that's fine. I'll just uh, pirate it. Pir- yeah, pirate it. Yeah, because like, uh, like, how else am I going to view a series, you know what I mean? Like, at least but before the episode or the series comes out, if they didn't release anything, I'll be a little annoyed at the fact that maybe they announced something and then they just canceled it. But they didn't work on it, so it's like, okay, at least you announced it days before it happened. And mm-hmm. uh, as somebody pointed out, you know, maybe, you know, each Shizuku reviewers, you know, like they'll mention here, wouldn't probably be as popular as it is now. The only reason why this got the attraction of many people is because it's available via a legal streaming service area. Mm-hmm. You know, so now it's gotten the attraction of dozens of people, hundreds of thousands of people across the globe. And it's like now all of a sudden that shit's just taken away, you know. But yeah, yeah like had yeah. this been taken out beforehand, had this been taken out before they even did one episode... I would have been a little salty about it, but I would have been like, okay, fine. At least you did not work at it since then. And maybe yeah, I would have been a little exactly. annoyed too because it'd be like, okay, th- I, I hope the contractors that, that were working on this series or that were supposed to work on this series got this told to them in advance so that they can work on another series out there. Because you also yeah. have to remember, there there's a lot of like details behind the scenes that go down that we, the viewers, do not get to see. So you mm-hmm. always want to make sure everybody that's, you know, that's suffering through this moment gets some form of compensation for the mistake that they committed. Yeah, and, and look, I completely understand as to wh- why Von Invention will make this move because, yeah, this is an edgy anime. I get it. Especially from last week's episode. Woof. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that, you want to that, talk about that, 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 last week's? Let's talk about this week's, man, because this week's episode was on a. I I thought last oh, week's so, episode so, was was wow, but this this week's episode was like, whoo boy. Uh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> now before we get into that, I do want to make something clear. 
Funimation has never showcased an uncensored version of Ishizuki Reviewers. It's always been censored. Uh huh. So I know for the fact that yes, there there was there were some sex scenes going on, but it was uncensored. So for those people who aren't into that kind of stuff, you know, at least at that level of edginess, that's why there's an, there's a censored version to begin with. You know, they they never shown any uncensored versions. So, no. you know, why bother uh, taking down issues like reviewers if you're going to be having a a, a censored version to uh, to begin with? I guess they just they, didn't want to go through the hassle of it, man. That's my right. theory. But it's like still, you committed, you put it out. Now accept what you got and just go with it through the end. Because all this does, what you did now, is mm -hmm. simply cause more chaos under your belt than what would have been had you just kept the series on with you the whole way through. In fact, I think there would have been no controversy had this series still been available on Funimation. Because you know why? From the normal viewer's point of view, it would have just been another anime show. Mm-hmm. You know, from like a standard generic viewer, it would have been just another anime show that's in this catalog of anime that you can watch via Funimation streaming service. But right. the moment you take it down, that's when the attention starts kicking in. And Especially when when it's a when it's a very trending trending anime. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> Funimation, you done goofed, buddy. Oof. <laughs> yeah, which is exactly, you know. Whatever the reason is, you know, Tagagi san, B Stars, I swear to God, man, we uh, World War Three. The, the day Snafu Season Three does not get featured on the streaming service, that's when World War Three starts. Oh no, no, the the, the day that gets uh, officially licensed, and then they do one episode, and then they ax it after one episode, that's when World War Four starts. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, we just skipped three. We're going straight to four, baby. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but the point I'm making here is that pretty much if you do this to any trending anime, yeah, people are going to get mad about it and they, will say, and they will say something about it. So. Yeah, so Funimation, know. don't be surprised that you're getting comments slash tweets repeatedly about the fact that you took out a show for a while because what you did was not right, man. I'm just saying. No. And no, no not it's cool, like, man. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's, that's just my take on this entire uh, controversy with this move. Just uh, overall, just n negative opinions about it. Not a huge fan of it. Yeah. I highly doubt uh, Funimation is going to bring it uh, bring this back because, you know. Yeah, Why would they just suddenly back out, you know, on what they just did? Yeah. You know, so. that, that's the thing. There, there, there's just so much ridiculous things happening behind the scenes. Also, Hitch, you bring up a good point. I'm surprised no controversy was really coming out from the series at all. That's the shocker to me. What Nobody was SPW? getting mad about it. Nobody was getting pissed off about it. The moment that Funimation decides to take it out, that's when the controversy started. Because, like, all this time, the, these past couple of weeks that have been out now, people may have said, oh, I don't enjoy it, or maybe I, I dislike this type of genre. But, like, nobody was really going ham at it being available legally on Funimation. Mm -hmm. But it was like, the moment you decide to take that out of your streaming site, that's when the issue kicked in. And I feel Funimation did not know what they got themselves into, and I feel like with their actions that they decided to cause just now, they made something that was bad into worse. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Not much more to say on that, buddy, but, like, any final thoughts, Man. I guess? No, nothing need to add on that. It's just that it's just very unfortunate that from here on now, we're going to have to pirate uh, issues to give reviewers from here on out. And uh, that's the life we have to live in, boys, yeah. you know? It's things like this yeah. that makes anime pirating super common across the globe. And it will never stop as long as actions that Funimation took now continue to exist. Because as long mm -hmm. as that exists, more people will simply go out of their way to try to find illegal streaming sites to watch anime. Because why support something that can easily swipe away what you're watching in the blink of an eye? With mm -hmm. no explanation whatsoever outside of you having to go out of your way to ask them. And not them coming out up front and telling you the entire world about what's been going down with that. 
So yeah, it's unfortunate, but it is what we live in. And uh, I guess we'll find out what, what's going to happen moving forward. But for now, the fans seem to be really enjoying this series, given that fans have gone out of their way to sub mm -hmm. this series now with moving forward. And Evie, yeah. I, I really wish you had watched this fourth episode, man. Because I, I uh, kid you not, uh, I kid you not, the mm -hmm. first few minutes of this episode is like the most coincidental timing in anime history, man. I swear really? to God. Yeah. Yes, because like they make a joke about the series ending in this episode. And they have like the narrator come out be like, thank you so much for supporting our series. You know, all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, bruh, this was like so well timed. Like, holy shit! <laughs> like, I, I, like I mentioned, I wish you saw it because, like, the moment I saw it, I'm like, man, if there was ever a moment where it'd be like the most well timed fake ending in any series, it's it's right now because, like, I think the the sub went like this: is like, thank you for being with Ishizuka reviewers for so long. The reviewers shall continue to live on in our hearts, or something like that, <laughs> and because apparently, like the wow. three, the, the three heroes died in this episode. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, well, supposedly <laughs> die anyway. That that's how they try to kick things off in the episode. So now, the, now I understand. I completely understand why Funimation would take it out because when you watch this episode, the the whole premise of this episode, the first half anyway was for these characters to go and locate another brothel and then they find one in like a dark alleyway and i think it's like a succubus area and then they discover something really odd about it and it's like oh it's only 500 gold or something like that which is apparently in their world very very cheap you know so they go inside, mm -hmm. they try to figure out the explanation as to why this is the case, and they also point out something very interesting about it as well. They say, once you go inside and you pay the price, you are not coming out until you are cleaned. And when I say clean, I mean they are wiped out. They have nothing left in them. Like, clean. Mr. Clean, where are you at? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and what I mean by this is that there's like a do dozens, dozens of like succubus girls that they call like CB rated girls that are all in like this one cage or like in this one area. And they're pretty much all waiting to gang bang the living hell out of dudes. And that's the, wow. that's the whole thing. <laughs> like, I'm talking about dozens. Like, there was even a point where, like, one of the girls got wet. And she just banged herself on the glass repeatedly. And I'm like, holy damn, what is this? <laughs> now, like, when you watch this episode, you could completely understand why the subbing staff did not want to censor this episode. Because, like, if you censored this episode, the entire episode would pretty much be completely censored, man. That's just how it is. Bur Right. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. So, uh, hmm. I suppose that would probably make sense as to why Funimation would do this, but I, I still don't like how they decided to make this decision. Uh, pretty yeah, early. yeah. They, like, like I mentioned, you committed to it. Go for it. You know, just, just accept what you, you accept your mistake that you made, and just move forward, and then mm -hmm. learn from your mistakes and make better, you know, decisions next time. Yeah. So I was like hoping to see like how the hell they were intending to uh, officially <laughs> uh, censor it. We'll never find out on that part. But like, dude, my god, <laughs> mm -hmm. that scene. Okay, the the elf, the bear, and Stunk all mm -hmm. went together inside that brothel, and uh, Krem was outside watching it because she was like, "Hell no, I ain't going in there." Because those you, girls, you man. they they wanna, they just wanna gangbang you repeatedly. They went inside there, and I think it was like thirty minutes in, they were like almost at the brink of death, man. To the point that they mentioned in the episode that they needed three weeks for them to recover, so that they could Ooh. come back. <laughs> and then Krem so, so, is. So, so, so. 
so you could say they were really drained. They, they were drained beyond <laughs> belief. Like they, like their entire like goddamn blood and everything. They were, they looked like grandpas at the end of it all, man. They, they were Jesus like whole. Christ. They were wiped, man. They, they were completely done at that point. And it, it's so funny because like Krem says, hey, like mm -hmm. they're gonna die. And then the staff is like, yeah, they kind of got themselves into it. I mean, I told them in advance that this is going to be what's going to happen to them. And fun fact, normally when guys go inside that brothel, we normally don't let three people go in. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, wait, what, what the hell is that supposed to mean? And literally like a minute later, a hundreds, hundreds of people, like I think they're like boars, all mm -hmm. just huddled up. And then that's when you're like, oh, I get it. There's supposed to be an insane amount of people to go inside with all the succubus girls that are inside that area. But because only three dudes went in, all the girls went straight for the three dudes instead of spreading Ugh. them out amongst the hundreds that would have been in there beforehand. Jesus. So, so it's pretty much another situation where it's pretty much uh, Kazuma with those... Or girls. Exactly, but this time they actually got gang banged. <laughs> yeah, except this time, yeah, they, they actually did it. Yeah, they, they yeah. did it, unfortunately. <laughs> and they, they did not stop for like an hour, I think they mentioned. So, I don't know whether to feel bad for them or... Uh, happy for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you see their reviews, you'll definitely get the answer you're looking for, buddy. Because their reviews are, I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm looking forward to that once, um, I, uh, once I find the episode online. That is. Yeah, so that, that's the first half of the episode, by the way. <laughs> that wasn't even oh, like boy, the whole boy, episode. That was more. that was the first <laughs> half of the episode. I ain't going to go on to the second half. That, that, that'll that be your mystery there, buddy. But it, it, right, I'll I definitely agree. say the first half is wild. Mm -hmm. The second half, still the same, but not as crazy as the first half, man. <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> Someone mentions there are, there are worse ways to die. Like this is one of those situations where it's like, oh hell no, I ain't gonna do this. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go back to Spike TV and 100 ways to die. <laughs> one hundred dumb ways to die. Shit. <laughs> but poor oh, man, but, uh, 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 just pretty much pour one out for our reviewer boys, man. They didn't mm -hmm. deserve this fate, and uh, hopefully, whatever happens moving forward, um. I hope this series continues to get the the love and respect and support that it's been getting since it got officially, you know, right. uh, licensed and whatnot, and officially available to see sub. So let's hope that this series doesn't die out, and hopefully people will continue to enjoy it for what it is and not for what it once was. Got, so. Yeah, definitely. All right, man. But, so uh, that's pretty much going to be it for me. But go on. Yeah, so that was this week's episode now. Yeah, last week's episode was, uh, man, uh, talk about a switcheroo, right? Oh, oh, oh <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> especially, especially when you realize that uh, there's a, something a little, that's something a little bit interesting with Cram in a certain, uh, in a certain species. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie to you. I watched the, um, I watched the episode mm -hmm. of the uh seton academy before i yeah. watched the uh the interspecies reviewers oh my god yeah <laughs> so that was the most well-timed <laughs> episode release i've ever seen because i'm like wait a minute hold on a second that species is similar to another one from seton academy oh my no <laughs> and that's when they got into it and i'm like oh god <laughs> I was like, holy shit, that was so well timed. I loved it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, this sounds like I, I watched Seton Academy before I watched these uh, Ishizuku reviewers because I was like, all oh, right, there was an episode that came out for Ishizuku reviewers. But the recent mm -hmm. episode of Seton Academy came out, so let me go watch that instead. It's like, oh, well, that was a pretty good episode. Well, I'm glad we got into this uh, Hyena Girl. Now yeah, right? Watch the, yeah, now let's get into Ishizuku reviewers. Oh, look, another Hyena Girl. Oh. <laughs> and, and my god holy shit man i i was dying of laughter in that episode man i don't know what it was but like the premise about these gender bender kind of things really is amazing because 
what happened is that they're inside a specific, I think, a hotel where you take these drinks that reverts your gender. Yeah. yeah, 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 these potions. And you drink them, and it reverses your gender. So you could be a male and go to a female, mm-hmm. and vice versa, with females going into males. Or in Krem's case, you know, just yeah. gone. Just Yeah, and your parts actually changed, by the way. Yeah, they, like they, 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 they animated it all. <laughs> yeah, they did. And I'm like, they oh, did. wow, that, that's insane. So I'm like, I, I did like the premise. It's actually really cool because it's like, the whole premise was about the uh, about them trying to, you know, understand the opposite gender's point of view, you know, because mm-hmm. it's like, okay, we've always done, you know, done the whole male to female thing. How does it feel like if we are the females this time around? And so they do that. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so you know, they gotta find a way to under- <laughs> to understand a woman's point of view. Exactly. That's the solution. <laughs> So yeah, so they become these like, Tig Bitties uh, girls, like literally, except for two of them, because only mm-hmm. one lost the elephant, and then the other one just looks the same, except the voice got higher pitched, really. <laughs> yeah, we got introduced to Aunt Clemsoma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and man, it, it was interesting because like, I loved the various girls that were also introduced there as well, because it was like different for each different person. Species. Yeah. yeah. Like, one was, like, uh, one reminds me of, like, a little lolly girl, but she's, like, 500-something years old, but she has the lolly look to her. And then, yeah, yeah, I know who you're referring to. And then there's the slime. And then we got introduced to, to another elf girl. Yeah, no, oh, yeah, it was smile. another elf girl, but I forgot for who it was, too, though. It was for uh, Stunk. It was for Stunk? Okay. And then the last girl was a hyena kind of girl. Mm-hmm. And that was when you started to see everybody give their own individual opinions as to each individual uh, girl. So it was mm-hmm. interesting to see that. But then everybody was like, huh, I never thought we'd ever get to see the day when Krem would go for, you know, this kind of girl. The, uh, hy- uh, hy- yeah, hyena species. Yeah, exactly. And the staff was like, wow, I'm surprised she went with him. And I'm like, wait, what do you mean? Well, you see, hyenas, they... They come included with something else because of their species. They they do this, and I'm like, wait. Yeah. And the, the the funny thing about it was that it was hinted at throughout the episode. You know, you saw it throughout the various like moments yeah, when she's like I... looking in the books. She's seen about the whole dudes about females turning into males and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So you're 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 seeing all that, and then it's like everybody is out like, listen, don't do that. We ain't gonna do that. For sure as hell, we're not going to get our butts banged by dudes or females turned into dudes. <laughs> Go for chicks. And mm-hmm. Krem's like, okay, fine. And I'm going to twist it. <laughs> I'm going to go with Hyena Girl. And and that he did. And Only yes. this time, uh, yeah, the Hyenas come come with uh, the same parts. Yeah. Uh, male or female. Yeah, exactly. So just imagine what had happened to the poor lad. Or that's what you think. Because I think he gave the highest review out of the entire <laughs> in the entire crew in regards to that. <laughs> I will say the funniest review has to be the uh, the, the elf's experience, where he literally ex- exclaimed that he, he had a pretty awesome time. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like oh, oh shit, this is happening to me. How do I feel about it? It was fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> It was so good because it's like you see everybody else they do give high praises as well But it was like for Krim who's always been the one about like oh, I, I'm not the assertive type or whatnot And mm-hmm. then she, she slash he gives it a solid score. I'm like, bro. That is great right there I, I love that moment especially when everybody read about it and they discovered the truth and they're like I guess he just likes that sort of thing, you know? <laughs> I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, well, not going to complain. And nobody complains about it either. Everybody seems to accept for it for what it is. And everyone came out anyway, enjoying it. So that yeah, was a good episode, though. I loved it. I really it, loved the it, comedy. It, it, yeah, it was a good episode. See, this is this is the kind of con- this is the kind of content I watch. Yeah. This is the type of shit I watch. Like, the, the co- See, it's not just the edginess. It's the comedy that, that get, gets us to watch these shows. Exactly. Because they, they pull off moments where it's like, 
it, it's one of those shows, I guess the best way to put it is that it, it makes you think you're going to go in one direction, and then they completely throw a curveball at you, and it goes into a completely other direction, which works to its better. Yeah, yeah it works for, its, uh, for the better. So, yeah, the comedy is so perfect in this show. If you love etchy comedy kind of shows, this is a solid one to recommend. Now, of course, I would tell you at this moment, hey, watch your VF Animation streaming site. But since it's no longer available out there, um, I can't say or I cannot say to go and watch it illegally. But... You know, I, I can't control what you guys do behind the scenes. You know, I'm I'm just not I'm just saying. I'm you know I, I'm not gonna say anything much outside of that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and see, I, I think what what really does make Edge Seeker reviewers stand out compared to other uh, well-known um, you know edgy anime is that I think it's because they really um, you know make comedy out of the entire the entire premise of um, of sex. Pretty yeah. much because you know, pr pretty much you know, because it re it relates to you know to real life of the over the fact that people do make jokes about sex, right? Yeah. So in a way, it's like th th this is kind of very relational in, in terms of um you know what how people interpret sex, the kinks, and you know the weird boners as the as the, as the descriptions as mentioned before, right? Exactly. So it just it just fleshes out so well. Whereas you go to other anime. You got these edgy animes that um, that's also like you know have action right or have slice of life. P people don't make fun of that. Th there's no way for you to you know to comedize out of those things. Exactly, it it's hard. Way. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. So I you know you know so for those of you guys who haven't watched this series, y you could understand as to why people were giving this series so much praise and why people were so disappointed with Funimation with their decision yeah so, yeah it's just it's just a really good show you know and I, i'm glad we, we i'm glad uh we, we started watching the show even though we had our doubts about the potential of the show and man i'm just happy we came out loving it at the end of it all man that's my favorite part about it definitely so yeah, yeah. can't wait for the so next episode though <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> But for now, you gotta go watch this episode, man. I'm just saying, watch this week's episode. You're gonna love it, I swear. <laughs> you know, I'm scared over the fact that if they can pull this shit off from last week, and now the shit that went down this week, it, like, this, this is only episode four. We only got about, like, what, more than six episodes left? I don't even know how many, like, this could be 24 episodes for all we know. I, hold on, let me go and check on it's the, uh, my 12. anime list on this. 12. It's 12? Oh, God. 12, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Like, can you imagine what uh, what other sorts of things these writers could pull? It's like, mm. <laughs> I, I want to read the manga so badly, but man, I'm gonna wait until this series is concluded first before I decide to go into it. <laughs> I, yeah, I wanna yeah, I wanna yeah. surprise myself every week with what they got next to review. Gotcha. But yeah, that, that's all I have to say about your secret reviewers and this whole shenanigans with Funimation. Yeah. Hopefully they'll mm, but... they'll they'll fix themselves up. And uh, let's hope it turns out for the better, of course. Once again, mm -hmm. you know, I feel sorry for the creators of this series. They put their love and effort into this show. And they mm -hmm. thought that they were going to be, you know, getting the respect that it deserves outside of, uh, outside of uh, Japan. But it's like, well, this is now it's turned into a completely different story, man. So let's right. see what happens moving forward now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's all pretty right. much all I gotta say. So go on. Yeah. So yeah, let's uh, let's see what other anime we should talk about. All right. So I was we... thinking about one, honestly. Okay. Uh, one that I love a lot. The one that's really become my favorite of this season. Okay. Can you guess what it is? Hmm. I, I assume we're gonna be going to a science class. Yes, indeed, buddy. And we're gonna try to do our best to learn about the implications <laughs> of romance. <laughs> So you uh, want to yes. go into it? Yeah, let's get into it. Definitely. All righty then. Definitely one of my favorite shows out there. Let's talk about science fell in love. So I and tried man, to prove it. And man, uh, I think you, you've proved. I, I think you already had enough proof with that image right there because uh, man, dude. Mm. the best girl, best girl on the right. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I mean, to, to me personally, best girl is the one in the middle. 
best to, to, to <laughs> uh, like yeah sense <laughs> senpai <laughs> I, I guess to you that that's why the throne is there to, to proclaim the, the best girl exactly right <laughs> to me anyway that's why i got this image here <laughs> but man I, i've been really loving this uh, show so much now what well, i'm i'm glad buddy I, I, i'm so happy with this man i i never thought i would enjoy it as much as i did but dude Ibarada, uh, Himuro, uh, Kanare, like all of these characters are so good, man. It's so great. I love every single one of them. And this week's episode was just incredible, man. Absolutely <laughs> incredible. Because this yeah. was like uh, continuing off from what happened last week, which if I'm recalling correctly was them concluding off with saying, hey... You're doing all these kind of cutesy moments and whatnot. Let's take it up a notch. Let's try to kiss. Yeah. Do... yeah. So it, it, it was it, it was the episode following their actual date. Yeah. So you want to take this one, buddy? Because I'm pretty confident you probably have the deets correct on this one. Mm, right. Hmm. You uh, need the I info by any chance? I, I might need help with that. Yeah. All right. Here we go, buddy. <laughs> It's hard to it's hard to remember this episode like straight up from the from the top of your head. So I'm trying to my best to remember what really happened in this episode. But pretty much the entire premise of last week's episode was that you know now they're going to experiment as to you know kissing the whole premise of kissing, and they were going back and forth as to you know what really sets the mood for an individual to. Start, for two individuals to start kissing each other, you gotta look from the amount of brightness, from the setting, and from the, <laughs> the noise level. You, you're taking all these factors that w will determine, you know, that pretty much calculates the right moment for you to uh, to kiss your ideal partner. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And they yeah, went so through like so many different things, man. <laughs> And, and, and look, coming from a psychology major, uh, you know, for someone who's who's uh, done experience, who has read through many experience before, I, I, it's pretty hilarious because you know I, I think a, a lot of pe uh, s uh, science majors, for those who watch anime, they could definitely relate to these characters and what exactly they're doing because you could understand f from their education what it is that they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And my man, this week's episode just continues to deliver on that. Because now, you know, after the date that they went through and all, all the shenanigans that they pulled off last week, it's like, okay, how do we top ourselves up this time around? Well, let's try kissing. Let, let's just go front front up on this one. Kisu. We're going to mm -hmm. kiss each other. We're going to have different experiments as to how we kiss because it's going to be like we're going to have individuals go and mix and swap and whatnot. You're going to have Yuri kisses. You're going to have BL kisses. You're going to have all these kind of moments. And my favorite bit about these kisses, though, mm -hmm. are like how s two certain people view kissing other characters, man. Because, like, uh... I think it was the moment when Ibarada went straight up to Himuru and kissed her mouth to mouth. Everybody oh, yeah. in the entire crowd was like, what are you doing? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, listen, you're not supposed to feel... And I think it was Ibarada that was like, hey, listen, we do this commonly in like other parts of the country. Isn't this supposed to be a common thing? And then everybody like, was like, the no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, this isn't how we do things here. <laughs> and she's like, like oh. But, oh, but you know what? It, it, but you know what? It's fine. Like, you know, a kiss between girls, they, they don't really count as the first kiss. Right? And then or you see one points. of them blushing over there in the sidelines, yeah. though. <laughs> but man, ooh, that, that was some spicy stuff, though. I loved it. Loved uh, every uh, second uh, of it. Uh, yeah, uh, of course you can't. You, you, uh, you know, for, for romance animes like this, it doesn't hurt to have a, you know, a, a bit, you know, a, a few sprinkles of fan service from here and there, you know? Oh man, did this anime is fan service the anime? <laughs> Especially when when you finally get into that moment with uh Himuru and Yukimura, dude. That that those that, that moment, I will not deny that mm -hmm. moment when this dude kisses her hair mm -hmm. and like his backup line in that moment was like the most badass line I've ever heard from a science nerd. <laughs> in anime history because it's like 
Okay, I'ma kiss you in the place that'll probably leave the least amount of impact to you. And the reason mm -hmm. why is because I'm only gonna kiss you when everything is perfect. You'll only get my kiss when that moment happens. So wait for me until that day comes. And I'm like, mm. dude, that is the nerdiest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> and then I'm like, I wonder how Himuru sees all this. And she is blushing beyond belief because she felt, like, amazed by that line, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody else was like... like he, he was a so queen. <laughs> yeah, it was like, everybody else was like, like just kiss already, god damn it. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> You know, so it's stuff oh, like yeah. that that happened at the end. Oh, my, dude, the 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 Rikakuma, the 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 bear, when he had to explain uh, yeah. about like all of the physics like, the behind noise and stuff regarding romance and how that works to certain mm -hmm. areas, it's ridiculous. But I loved it. <laughs> But anyway, uh, Evie, were there were there any moments though in this episode that really stood out to you the most from all of this? Well, when it was um, hold up, let me just move this arrow from here. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I will say that um, w w uh, there was there was this one uh, there was this one moment where it was Ibaras and Inukai's uh, turn to kiss. You know, the childhood friends. They were just standing there, just casually playing video games. They just like, eh, well, what are we supposed to kiss? Yeah, but uh, let, let's just finish this game first. <laughs> yeah, it's like, listen, it's like, listen, if you pull off a five-star gotcha pull, I think it was, you can kiss me anywhere you want. But if you don't get any five-star summons out of anything you've been oh, doing right. right now, you, you have to kiss me in the foot. Fun yeah. fact, <laughs> they never showed it. They never, they never did, showed the outcome of it, except in one second. Because in the very finale, when they were showing off all the various kisses that everybody did, they mm -hmm. had like a little like, um, not a montage, but just like various collages, I guess you could say, of like all the outcomes of every kiss. Uh, the, 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 their, uh, their results. Yeah. yeah. The data collection. And guess what happened to the poor lad? I guess you could assume what happened. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the kiss uh, to the foot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, specifically the shoe, to be exact. The shoe, yeah. But man, I like okay. Another moment that I will have to bring up to, uh, bring up to. Not only was uh, Ibarra was pretty daring to, uh, towards Himuro, but also Yukimuro when it was their turn to kiss. <laughs> yeah, man, you it's like he was to about to break this man's neck for asking, like, where did you kiss him? Where was it? Where was the shoe? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and then of course, like when Yukimuro kissed uh, or supposedly kissed. Uh, Kanade, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Himuro was like, how was it? Please tell me it was not good. And then you, you, you see her, she's like, she's about to cry, man. She's, she's, she couldn't accept that he, that uh, Yukimura was kissing someone else. And then Kanade is like, why did you make this experiment a thing if you're going to look like this when we're going to be talking to each other? It was yeah, great. Much. <laughs> I've been really loving that girl so much, Kanade. She's so hilarious because she's like the straight man of the group, surprisingly. She points out the obvious. Yeah. yeah, she straight up just says, just like, just kiss already, just date already, just do this already, just fall in love with each other already. And everybody else is like, science, <laughs> <laughs> science will Pretty lead well. us all the way to it, and it's great. I, I loved every minute of it. Uh, so yeah, it, it's moments like that that's just throughout this episode. I did love a lot of the scenes when it finally got to that moment when Yukimura and uh, and Homuro were finally together in the roof. Cause it's like they had oh they my. had the feels. It's like they had the feels. Like yeah, you know, there's a perfect landing. We're on the rooftop now. Let's get on with this being. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, okay, th once the helicopter leaves, then we'll try to kiss each other. L let's give thirty seconds to pass by. All right, thirty seconds to pass by. Let's try to kiss each other. Oh my God, the sun has finally set. Shit! Oh no, 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 wait! I have a backup plan. I have these candles. You see, <laughs> we're gonna light up these candles, which will give us the infinite amount of light that we need to make the romantic seal uh, scene feel romantic. And then, like at the very end, like the janitor comes up and is like, "Yo, we gotta wrap things up. I gotta close things out before it gets dark here." And, <laughs> and Yuki yeah. Mura just like, <laughs> "No!" <laughs> It was great. I loved it. It's just like a chain of negative events just happening one after the next. Was... Yeah, just like 
Jesus Christ, so many, so many bullshit here in there for these two. I felt so bad for him because it was like the scene was great, everything felt nice. I was like, hell yeah, I'm gonna enjoy it, and everybody wanted to enjoy it, but then of like, course, like it, it, it was the most perfect moment too because you thought that holy shit, like you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't happen, but it could actually happen because. Pretty much, these two characters weren't even hesitating to, to begin with when they, you know, they, they simply wanted to kiss because for the experiment. But hey, we, what matters is that we wanted to see the kiss. Exactly, but, right? Yeah, but of course, uh, yeah, given the, uh, the entire premise of this anime and this comedy, some shit's gonna go down. And unfortunately, they didn't went through with their kiss. Man, I was so mad about that. <laughs> but then, when the, when the dude decides, okay, listen, screw everything, I'm gonna kiss you. But instead of kissing you in the mouth, I'm gonna kiss you in this like in the side of your hair. It's gonna be like you're gonna get my kiss one day, but when the time is right. So until then, mm -hmm. wait for me. And now I know how Humuru got a hard on for that, but she fell in love with that moment, with that one liner right there. <laughs> she was like, "Oh yeah. my god, this is why I love this man so much." And everybody else is like, "Why can't you guys just be normal people?" <laughs> yeah. Because really, science is not even that complicated to begin with. Why They're making it complicated. <laughs> They're making it so complicated. It's so dumb. I just loved every minute of it, man. It's great. Yeah. So I, all, all I know, it was a really good episode. Indeed. I, I, you know, uh, I find it funny how we spent like very little on this episode, and then we spent like almost an hour on Ichizuka reviewers. <laughs> and it's like. Well, that's well, of course, with the Funimation controversy going now, of course, we gotta talk about uh, used to get reviewers for a longer length. Yeah, that is true. I, ju I just find it funny if you just completely take that out of context and be like, oh my god, we spent longer on a review about sex than about science, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah, I, I definitely understand. And then, of course, we also missed out, I don't think we talked about two episodes that occurred to the, the two episodes that, that, uh, occurred today with, uh, it's just to get reviewers, so. Indeed, yeah, we, we had to break all that down. Oh, um, okay. I just reminded myself. You tweeted out that there was a back, that, uh, there was a certain background music on the, today's on the most recent episode that you thought sounded way too familiar. Yes. Did you, did you did you by any chance found out? Yes, I did. I I fucking did, and I was like, bro, oh. this can't be this song. It was okay. gone. Wh uh, which moment was it? Okay, it was like all the moments when they're like on the top of the roof. And you hear like a like a soft romantic melody, and then suddenly out of nowhere, like a, a vocal song or vocal part plays into it. Okay, yeah, I, I okay, that's when I kind of thought it was between Yukimura and uh, Ibada. Yes, mm -hmm. I was like, that sounds so familiar. What is it? And then I'm like, oh my god, it's a spoof of the Penguins Earth Angel. I'm like, dude, what? it's the, it, the, the the penguins that did the song Earth Angel. I was like, I don't, I don't that that song was from Back to the Future. Really? Yes. Hold on, I gotta I gotta get this song real quick. Hold on, I'm not gonna play it obviously for certain reasons because you know. Hold on, let me mute myself. I, I'm gonna hear like a clip. Okay. Of, uh, short like this. Just just you will hear it like the first few minutes of this. And you'll be like, oh, sweet Jesus, that literally sounds like Earth Angels right there. <laughs> I was like, bro, this shit is crazy. Like, the, 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 like I think Rike Gaigoi made a spoof out of this song. Man, <laughs> the references that they throw in there. You, you, you just the first few beats alone, correct? You, you already yeah, knew which one I was talking about. Yeah, the, yeah, the beats that definitely sound familiar from the first few minutes, but man, the references that this anime is throwing in. Who would have thought that like Earth it. Angel of all <laughs> songs, though? Earth Angel. <laughs> man, I love stuff like this. So yeah, big, big, big fan. All right, so that, that's my take on the episode, though. I found enjoyment out of it. The professor's still hilarious as always, man. And you can't go wrong with that guy. Oh, only I wish I could see that Sato Chesto, though. Oh, uh, yeah. well, maybe they're saving it for a big moment, though, because we do see him in the opening and the ending sequence. He's naked, in terms of like the <laughs> shirt, anyway. So I'm assuming we're yeah. gonna get a moment when he's gonna let loose. We don't know when, though. 
Only time will tell, I suppose. Indeed. All right, so uh, what should we talk about next, buddy? Because there's so many varieties of shows out there now, you know, we could go and discuss. Uh, I, oh, right, yeah. right, I do want to, I want to hear your opinion on this, because you said you only mm-hmm. watched one episode so far, correct? Of yes. uh, Bofuri. Mm-hmm. Being that uh, shield, uh, shield the girl, shield basically. Girl. Yeah. All right, so yeah, uh, you so just let me know then, buddy. Like, because I already watched, uh, or I should say, I caught up to everything so far. I, I watched. I think okay. it was like four episodes out right now. I want to say, I forgot how many episodes are out right now, but there are a bunch already out at this moment. Mm-hmm. But like, what do you think of it? Well, at least what I like about this. Um, well, actually, were you guys about this? Is the Isekai anime? Because no. You no. Know, okay, I kind of figured as much. Um. But go on, yeah, what were you going to say? It, it, like, it kind of reminds me of a little... It, it kind of reminds me of a high... Uh, I was going to say high school DXC. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think there are titties yeah. flying around in this one, buddy. <laughs> uh, I, um, it kind of reminds me of Sword Art Online, which, of course, you know, they don't go to an Isekai world, but, of course, this takes place in a virtual game, right? Yes. Um, and, when I kinda, and what I really like about um, the main character, just by the way she approaches this world, is that she... Invest everything in survival, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so of course, um, <laughs> you know, like throughout the, the entire premise of the first episode, whenever she levels up and whenever she acquires these uh, these skill points, she just invests everything on defense, which of course, that's the entire premise of this anime because, she, hey, she's like the female shield hero, so to say, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and, you know, basically she's, you know, and as she comes to realize on the first episode, her defense is just so damn high, like, not, no enemies can touch her. Not a single one. Like, even, even you, you, know, you get to this point on the first episode where uh, where I believe she got knocked out cold or she was just resting in the middle of the woods, and you come to realize that sometimes it's past, and you see all these creatures just just, go, just coming in after this girl. Um, actually, let me get her name, uh, because I think that'll really help. Um, Maple. They, Ma- okay. Yeah, yeah, her game name is Maple. But, like, she yeah. has a different name in the real world. But since we're normally in, like, the MMO world, we're going to just go by their, you know, by their game counterpart uh, uh, name. It makes more sense. Sh- sh- short and sweet. Of yeah, course. maple. So, well, it's cute. Yes. It is cute. Um, but, you know, you can't, you know, uh, as I mentioned before, you, you have all these creatures, all these creatures uh, c- coming after maple, trying to, like, deal some damage uh, to her. But she's not feeling anything. She just wakes up and she's like, "Oh shit! I have all, all these uh, monsters around me. I'm gonna kill them all!" Yeah, you love the. Yeah, I, I leveled up, and now you know just. Pre- um, uh, you know, again, I've only just seen the first episode, but you know, like every first episode, it was just nothing more than an introduction to some of these characters, and of course, the main character, and uh, just a little taste of the entire premise and gimmick behind this anime series. So. You know, um, I'm sure um, KG, you will provide more context a bit based on the, you know, on the episodes that you've caught up with. But you know, I, I really like these characters. Um, you know, I really like Maple and her um, her ideology with um, survivability and keeping up uh, a high defense. And yeah. We also got int- and we also got introduced to some other characters in the first episodes, like uh, Kuromu, and uh, what was her friend's name? Um, Sally, I believe. Sally, yeah, okay. So, yeah, overall, uh, it, it was a pretty good first episode. Yeah, uh, I personally liked it, and you know, again, man, um, if school wasn't in the way, I, I would have definitely cut it with all these episodes because um, I, I, I've liked what I've seen so far. Oh, dude, I've I've already caught up with all of the sh- uh, episodes. Uh, I forgot who it was that recommended it to me. I think I want to say it was Joey that recommended it to me, of Bofuri. Uh, but I've watched all four episodes now, and I have to say, I am so glad I'm watching this anime because my favorite thing about this series so far is mm-hmm. the pacing. The first episode alone, like mm. just from you watching it, did you feel like it was a lot like to get in? Like they, they, they like, like they threw so much at you, but it didn't feel like it was badly paced. It was like very well, uh, well paced amongst each uh, each segment. Yeah, it was well paced. Like you didn't feel the sense of rushing on the story. Like you know, they, they, you know, they were really taking their time with developing up this character. So you know, that's really happy because of course you don't want to go through a rush story and you know see this compilation of this character leveling up, leveling up multiple times in just one episode. You know, so I think pacing is definitely very important, and I think the first episode did a really good job on. It. 
Yeah, I, I'm very happy about it. I don't want to spoil anything for you moving forward because they do get into some moments where mm-hmm. it goes even insane in terms of some uh, of the things they pull off. But mm-hmm. it's not like it's not like disgusting, horrifying, you know, like plot twist. You know, oh, this is gonna be a very dark and gruesome anime kind of thing. No, no, it's like oh, some I of the like... plot twists is like more like, oh, I, <laughs> I didn't see that coming. You know, that kind of oh, thing. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I I thought it was gonna get like you know like a conscious hero dark moment. No, 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 no. You don't expect any of it so far. I don't know how the next few episodes are gonna be like, but for now, the four episodes that came out, you like everybody. You will absolutely like every single character that comes into screen, man, because everybody is so respectable, so kind to each other, support each other. And work alongside mm-hmm. each other. It's really great. Like the story's great, the characters are great, the world setting that we're in is great, mm-hmm. and the plot twists. The biggest thing of them all are fantastic. Episode four introduces a plot twist that's like, oh my god, I, uh, wow. So you're telling me that uh, I'm not gonna say anything on that, but it's like when you get to that episode, man. You'll be like, wow, you you will see how broken this one character is. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, out of curiosity, how many episodes are we in right now? Four, four. Is it four? four? Just okay, four. So it's the most recent one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, they do some things because of, uh, because of the main girl, Maple, and her actions that she's already caused within a few episodes. And then you'll be like, ah, oh, wow, even despite doing these changes, Maple is still... And then you, you'll get to it. I don't want to say much more, man. <laughs> you'll gotcha. love it. Okay, now I'm looking at the character list and... You know, okay, so another thing that I do got to point out too, the, the character designs are all they are looking really great. Oh, dude, um, they are great in motion, man. Now, I'm looking at the character list and, you know, great designs, um, but... KJ, I'm kind of curious from you. My best girl, at least design wise, be- you know, I say design wise because I haven't caught up yet with these episodes. At least to me, design wise, has to be Kasumi. You know who Kasumi is? Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. okay. Well, I'm pretty sure you've seen her in the opening, but she, I believe she's like the, uh, the yes. user. The yes. Right girl? Uh, yeah. I think she's like a blade user. I'm not sure. A blade user, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so yes, you do see her at some point. Okay, and okay, I won't yeah. say when, you'll be a little disappointed as to when you'll see this character, to be quite honest, un- unless you catch up to episode 4 before episode 5 drops, but yeah, you will see her soon. Mm. Okay, but uh, what's uh, what's your best girl, at least from the characters that, uh, that have been introduced up to episode 4 so far? Oh, Sally, man. Sally? Yeah, yeah. to me, uh, I think uh, what's uh, weird was that Sally, I thought she was going to be that snotty kind of character who would act like a complete like oh i'm the greatest of all times or kind of you know like i thought she was gonna have like that kind of attitude but she's super super great man like she knows what she wants to do god even request even request saying that sally is great so let's like oh yeah she's she's so fun to watch when you see her and maple work together in some sequences they are some of the most best moments in this show man (laughs) It's it's super nice. creative. You'll you'll love every bit of it. Uh, so yeah, Sally is great on her own, and with Maple, it's just ten times better. That, that's what I'm saying right now as we stand. Like, mm-hmm. I'm really loving all the characters so far that's introduced. Uh, Kudomo, I didn't think he was gonna be a character. I th- would think I would enjoy given his look and whatnot, mm-hmm. but he's a really cool character to see. And that oh, nice. also applies to some other ones, like Is as well, which I think was the uh, the the crafter, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. You'll probably learn more about her later as well. Uh, but Kasumi, though, I want to say a lot about Kasumi, but it's like we don't really know much about her yet. So mm-hmm. I would think maybe episode five is probably when we'll dive more into it. So you'll see her soon. Uh, yeah. But she does leave a mark, though. We'll we'll say that. Also, I just realized that Mabel was that uh, Mabel's voice actor. It's the same one as uh, Senpai from Much Good Girl Senpai. Excuse and, uh, me, what? Uh, yeah, it's the same voice actor. Uh, no! Yeah. Oh my god, dude! I'm looking at the supporting uh, or at the list of all the VAs or voices that she's done over the years. Mm-hmm. 
Dude, she has done some of my favorites. Oh my god, I never knew she did this. Oh my gosh, she also did Sakura from Zombieland yes. Saga. Best girl. Yeah, looking forward to season. Yeah, best definitely best girl. Looking forward to season two when I when I gets announced. Oh, dude, it's gonna be great. I, I love the music videos they've been dropping so far prior to season two's announcement, man. Uh, but she also did uh, one of my favorite girls as well, Hikari from uh, Demichan. Uh, Demi Chan is like interview. I think it was like interview with. Um, with oh, interviews with Monster Girls. Yes. yes, that one. I haven't seen that. Dude, you have to. It's so great, man. I, I love I'll, Sensei. I'll see it when I get a chance. And mm -hmm. also, I'm gonna tell you right now. The moment you see it, you're gonna see a Sensei in there. She is best Sensei. I'm not gonna hear any questions regarding that. She is the best Sensei, and you will understand as to why that is. I if you give it a watch. I've seen clips of her, and uh, yeah, she's uh, mm, best girl material right now. <laughs> but, but when you get into it, though, when you start watching the series yourself, you'll be like, best girl goes into better girl. <laughs> right now, uh, Donnie, we were talking about uh, the show, both of you shown on in the image here, or uh, the Shield Girl anime. Um, so, and right now we were just talking about some of the voice actors that are in this show. We, we brought up the fact that... Uh, the main VA for Maple, being of Hondo Kaide, also did some pretty great ones throughout the years. Like, as I mentioned just recently, Sakura from uh, Zombieland Saga. She also did Senpai from Tejina Senpai. And the one I liked, personally, uh, Hikari from uh, Demi-chan. Or interviewers oh, with uh, Monster Girls. Yeah. Also, uh, going a bit out of topic with, uh, you know, with the topic of voice actors... Um, um, apparently, we're getting a, a pretty, a very special uh, voice actor for this, uh, for this, uh, for next week's episode of Pokemon. Oh man, Pokemon! Po yes. Dio. Now, fun fact though, I don't know if you knew this though, but like mm -hmm. that also that VA that's returning, that's a returning VA for Pokemon. Mm -hmm. They got the original VA that did Lance back in the day. To return to voice him again in this episode. It's Man. been roughly 10, 15 years, I want to say, since his last appearance on the big screen slash TV <laughs> scene. But they, like, you know, people talk Man. about continuity regarding this series. But, continuity like... Continuity with the voice actors. Yeah. Like, in the Piplup slash Krogan episode, the VAs that did Piplup slash Krogan for the DP days came back to do Piplup and Krogon. And then you come into this one, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's like the VA of Lance, the original one. We haven't heard him in over a decade. He's back. Like, that's insane. Man, it's, like, it's like, you know, you have a champ, you, you, ha you have a champion that we haven't seen in a long time versus the new champion, aka being the Gala, aka being Leon. And then you have the old voice actor of Lance coming back versus the, the more, uh, you know, the, a voice actor that just voice a more recent character yeah you know it, it, it's, it's kind of crazy like how that coincides with each other from the anime and real life like man but dude man daisuke ono is doing leon's voice oh my mm -hmm. god i am so excited for that that is amazing voice acting selection right there like this series got some pretty solid voice acting you cannot deny that truth right there Oh, definitely, man. Like you know, they, they hired the voice actor of Deku to come to come in the voice go, um, and now we're just getting the voice actor of um, Joe Title to come in and voice um, the champion Leon. It's like, man, the, 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 the power that this series possesses with voice actors is just too OP. I love it. Oh mm. man, you know what's also incredible too? What's up? The um. The the fact that like now thinking about it, oh my god, it's gonna be Jotaro versus Ash. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much gonna be. I, I I there's probably gonna be um like some editor out there that, that's gonna have um, uh, uh Ash be on Dia while um you know Leon beats Jotaro. Oh yeah, yeah. listen, I gotta see that. Yeah. Like you you know that one JoJo meme image, right? When like they're walking with each other. Or yeah, against, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 that one. I better see one of like Satoshi and the other one of Leon in, the, in that pose. Except we're gonna be seeing like a ripped Satoshi or Fatu right there with him. So that's gonna be great. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm looking forward to it, man. Yeah. 
So sorry, I just thought I got out of topic in, ter in terms of the voice actor. But I, I just thought we will bring that up a little briefly. But of course, we do have the Pokepod where we talk all Pokemon in terms of what happened, uh, what happens in the world out in the world of anime, any news. So more info. So if you guys want to hear more information about that, uh, stick around on Monday. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to be doing our best on that one, buddy. Mm -hmm. So let's hope uh, for the uh, let's hope uh, let's hope we get more information by then. But of course, we got the next episode coming out in just a bit, which will also give us the preview for that next episode too. So looking mm -hmm. forward to that. And uh, yeah, so getting back, I guess, into the wonderful world of anime outside of Pokemon. You mm -hmm. know, let's talk about another show, shall we? Uh, oh, sure. Now. What's another good one to talk about, though? We we have quite a few here. You know, we have... Okay. Go on. Um, okay, uh, if you don't mind, there is an anime I do want to talk about if you cut it without the episode. Okay, which one are you referring to? All right. So, by any chance, have you caught up with the... Have you caught up with um, Hanako-san? No, I have not. I'm oh, sorry, man. man. Dude, you got to catch up on these episodes. They, they They've been really good. I, I wish, but there's I just got a huge catalog of shows to watch, man. It's incredible. I hear you. I hear you. No, you're good, man. You're good. Just, you know, when you get the chance, uh, definitely give it a watch. All right, but, like, you know, to hear your thoughts on mm -hmm. it, though, since you brought it up, I'm assuming you've caught up to it, so please tell me, like, how has this show been for you so far? You know, we only talked about it, I believe, once, so I'm kind of curious about, like, has your opinion about the show changed since then? Are you still really not, liking it? Not at not at all. It, it's still a ten out of ten show for me, dude. It, it, it's come to it's come to become one of my top animes, or probably one of my top three animes of winter twenty twenty. Really now? That. Yes, and man, like when you okay, look, I'll just say this much without spoiling anything on uh, on these um recent episodes, but you know. At least uh, from the first impressions that you that you get from episode one, we got introduced to uh, to Hanako-san, and you also got introduced to uh, pretty much the main character of this series being of uh, Nene, and you know just based off the the first episode in itself, the interactions that these two have had, um, that, like they, it's been really enjoyable to watch. It's what makes the series, in my honest opinion, um, and of course you know just the, the comedy. Uh, the comedy is really great because it, you know it, it's not forced comedy. I thought it was comedy that's just uh, uh, well handled, um, and also of course um, the art style, the art, the, the art on this um, on this anime, it's pure eye candy. That that has to change one bit. Oh, uh, dude, much. the the art style is what's selling this series for me, man. And I'm gonna tell you this much, KG, uh, because they do travel to um, to this other world once you get into episode three. But when they get into this other world on episode three and four, uh, the scenery it's also it's also going to grab your attention to go on the really art no. style. Yes, I only finished up to episode two, so I still have like two episodes, I guess, to go through. Yes. Okay. And you know what? Um, since you cut, since you got to episode two, um, we just got introduced to a new character. By the name of um, uh, Minamoto or, or Ku. Yeah. Ku? Yeah. Which I think and the <laughs> whole thing was like a rivalry between him and Hanako kun in a way. Yes. <laughs> and I love it too because uh, just, you know, the, the bickering that, that these two have with one another. Uh, like, uh, I thought it's another. I thought it's an. Um, how do I put it? Like, it, it also keeps the show alive. Yeah, like, it's another layer to add to what's already a great show and doesn't really, uh, you know, doesn't really mm -hmm. affect the series overall in, like, a negative way. Yeah, like, okay, it kind of reminds, okay, like, this cheer, this uh, trio uh, right here, it kind of reminds me of Fairy Tale. if you're familiar, uh, if you've seen any of this episode. Oh, are you referring to, like, uh, Natsu and, uh, Natsu and Grey, was it? Not so, yeah, like that, that kind of not so in a great relationship where you know they kind of they kind of have have a bit of a, a rivalry or re relationship with each other. That's the best way I could describe it with Hanako Kun and uh, and Ku. Like, do you think do you kind of see it that way? In a, sense? in a way, yeah, I do. I don't know if they ever like flesh upon it the further you get into the show because I like I mentioned I only just saw it for two episodes, so I'm not sure how episode three or episode four like tackles that topic. 
Yeah. Well, okay. I'll say this much. If, if like as long as you're familiar with the relationship Natsu and Gray have in terms of, like the way they see each other and pick up with one another from time to time, it kind of works the same way for, from from these next few episodes. Nice. Yeah, but I- I'll tell you this much, uh, KG. Episodes three and four, you- you're gonna have a, a two-parter. Oh, um, it's a two-parter. It's a two-parter. Yes, and we're also gonna be a- we're also gonna get introduced to a new uh, a new girl. It's a oh mind you, KG, you're gonna like this one. It's a fox girl. And be yes, right back. She- we're, we're ending stream now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go watch it. Hold on, hold on a minute. Wait a minute, no, no, you don't do this to me. No, you can't tell me there's a fox girl and I have been completely unaware of this. Yeah, actually, okay, fox woman, excuse me, but... Eh, eh, Even girl. better! Works, right? works, right? <laughs> okay, uh, there's a fox woman, and yes, she is quite foxy. And there, and you're gonna like her even more once you get to the end of episode 4 with a little, um... with a, I would say with a little change that happens to her. Once that once the arc is concluded, so yeah, is that's it for the character. better though? It is for the better. Yes. 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 I'm so <laughs> excited. Listen, man. Anytime a series ever decides to put Mofu into a show, and Mofu mean fluff, being of like fox girls and whatnot, mm-hmm. you sold me 110. percent I see, my boy. only seen Thank two episodes, so I'm so sad I didn't catch up with it because like there's so many shows <laughs> out there. I mean like. You have the the Shield Girl. You have, you have uh, of course our favorite one. You know, being of um, of the uh, the the interspecies reviewers. You know, mm-hmm. I have the Ed, Ed, Nan, Eddie anime that I'm watching. Uh, Rikikai Goi. You know, being of the Science Fell in Love. Isekai Quartet. You know, Railgun, mm-hmm. Nekopara, which is also another great one, Seton Academy. Like, there's just so much anime I'm trying to watch right now. It's so hard to catch up, man. So, mm-hmm. now that you've put this to my attention, I'm not going to sleep tonight as I'm going to try to catch up to these two episodes <laughs> of uh, Hanukkah-kun just to get to my Fox Girl. Slash oh, <laughs> and, and, I will say, uh, and I will say this too. It's not all uh, funny. It's not all fun and comedy. Oh yeah, we saw that from the first episode alone. I think that also kind of introduced that to us. Well, it kind of that it kind of gets slightly darker on 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 episodes three and four, especially when you get into episode four, when you get into the backstory. Um, uh, you know that's that that's that's the um the i that's the candy that they they want to be fetching for. Yes, I'm excited then. Yes. So th- there, there's really good story. Uh, there's, there's really good story and developments on these next few episodes. So definitely, definitely um, watch them when you get a chance. All right, I'm definitely gonna give it a shot as <clears throat> soon as possible, man. I'm so mad that I haven't got a chance to see Fox Girl yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, You'll see looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. another. I guess uh, to move on into another anime. I guess we're gonna do like little mini short bursts here because like these are ones that uh. I'm pretty mm-hmm. confident, like, only maybe, like, one of us got to see, anyway. Um, mm-hmm. The Ed Edinari anime, man. Uh, Eizouken mm-hmm. Niwa Tewo Dasuna, which is, like, keep your keep your hands off, uh, what was it, like, uh... First, or just keep your hands off Eizouken, which is Keep your hands off Eizouken, yeah. Yeah, so the whole premise behind that series is basically these three girls trying to create a club in order for them to produce anime together. So one of them is more of like a concept mm-hmm. designer. Another one is mainly on the character designs. And then there's another girl, tall girl, who's just sort of there. But the chemistry that these girls have with one another is so amazing. Okay, let me give one positive thing I got to say about this anime real quick. Go ahead. Um, for starters, I love the voices for the characters. I think my favorite bit about them is that they don't sound anime-ish, as weird as that sounds. You know like how with anime they try to make a lot of female leads sound like with this kind of squeaky voice and whatnot to make them all cutesy and fit with each other, like the tone and all that? Yeah, I I would say on the first episode they sound sound like actual human beings. Yeah, they, they don't sound like anime, which fits perfectly because the whole premise about this anime is for dumb to create anime. Not mm-hmm. dumb in an anime, you know. So you, gotcha. you put that into your, you know, into your head and think about it. Be like, oh my god, 
like the the level of detail with this show is so great like when they try to explore the world that they created and just see an image and try to create a concept design regarding it like when they try to create like a uh, a, a shuttle out of like this one particular image and they somehow give it this kind of like uh, a dragonfly look to it mm-hmm. like stuff like that is great episode 3 had my ass rolling though like oh my god I was dying of laughter with episode 3 uh, how far did you get into this Evie out of curiosity um, only I'm, one episode I'm, in? I'm still on episode one yeah because uh, I have a lot I, I had a, a lot of other things going on in my life so yeah, yeah of I'm, course I'm I couldn't catch up yeah yeah of course you know so like the third episode <laughs> they do something hilarious mm-hmm. and I wish I could explain further but man when you get to it the the, the finale I want you to put attention to one of the girls face in the finale it is so good it was a great way to end the episode man. And uh, I need to watch episode 4 eventually, but th- this this anime is another sleeper anime in my opinion. Please give it a watch. I really believe people will enjoy it. If you love, like, the premise of these girls trying their best to live in a world where nobody wants them to create anime, and they're trying their best to create anime, you're mm-hmm. gonna really enjoy this series. I-, I I guarantee you, you'll get a good kick out of it, man. So... Mm-hmm. Loved okay. every bit of it. Yeah, because I, I was talking with um, with DJ before uh, one of our uh, Tassel cast, um, I believe the past Sunday, and uh, even he's even he's watching this series right now. And I told him if, that you know I've been hearing a lot of comparisons with this anime and and Nettie Nettie, and he agrees with that. He thinks that um, you know, it's just as good when it comes to you know the resemblance that you see with these characters and just the um. You know, just the comedy they see in there. So, does does it still maintain that kind of comparison in these four episodes? Yes, it, it definitely does, man. And you'll understand okay. more further as you progress on with the show, man. It's that good. All right. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I'll, I'll keep your word on that. All right. I'm glad to hear. So yeah. So I guess another short burst anime to talk about quickly. Um, Nekopara. Nekopara. Okay. That that is uh that is uh your stage. My yes, so because dude, your spotlight. I love Nekopara. I've I've streamed all the games that have been released so far. I love this series to death. It's a it's a nice, cute little series about a bunch of cat girls doing cat things in a uh, pastisserie known as La Soleil. And what's going down this time around? This story, anyway, is that the family are discovering themselves with a brand new kitten joining the crew this time around because one of the characters being of um chocola she's trying to go and grab something from the streets you know in the market and on her way back she discovers a cat all by herself just out there in the wild in like a playground with no person whatsoever she's just alone so Mm chocola for a bit decides to kind of bond a little bit with this little kitty and then at the very end of the first episode, that kitten decides to tag along with Chocola. And then, of course, now we have this brand new plot point with Chocola, Vanilla, and all the other cat girls living alongside this new kitten that joins the family. Mm-hmm. And if you've ever played any of the Nekopara games, uh, you'll be happy to know that A, this series is being done by the same studio that did the original Nekopara OVA from long ago, so there is that. So you, you know that this is already being done by good in, in good hands. Second thing to note, the VAs that did these characters in their original, you know, visual novel series are back again to reprise their roles here for this anime, so that's another good thing. And uh, third, top tier designs, man. I love the designs of all oh, these no. girls, man. They are absolutely fantastic. It's one of the things that really made me love this series. It's like the, the character designs are great. Uh, their their interactions are cute. Especially one in particular. She has like a... I, I've joked around this with the title. But I, I kid you not. When you watch the first episode, you're going to see one of the girls with the 60 frames per second hand motion. And it's so good. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, like they, they all have like their own unique quirk like cinnamon for example uh, She's one of the cat girls and she 
she gets, I guess you could say, wet over certain things that happen. But it's like so vague when those things happen, but she still gets it nonetheless. Because she, she starts like thinking too hard into it that she makes it so lewd that she pretty much wets herself in a way. Well, quote unquote wets herself, but she doesn't really do it. She, she, she says she's going to do it. And everybody else is like, please, for the love of God, don't. <laughs> so stuff like that. Then there's uh, another character in here, uh, Coconut, who has like this kind of like a little rivalry with one of her other sisters, Azuki. Mm -hmm. It's also great to see as well. So it's moments like these that are spread out throughout the series. I wish I could break it down a little more, but it's one that I would say is something that you should watch in your own spare time. It's not something I like 100% recommend. If you are a fan of Nekoparo, however, you're gonna love this series. I feel like it manages to take things from the visual novels and take that concept and bring it to the anime world in a way that's that feels natural and doesn't feel like it's its own separate universe. Like this, this, this series feels like its own continuation of Volume Three, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Like the events that happen feel like th this. This feels like another continuation of that storyline. I'm curious about the new kitten though. Because I feel like she's introduced here, but I get the strange feeling that there's going to be a very, very emotional moment later down this later down the road with, regarding this cat girl, and gotcha. it, it's going to hurt if they go that route, man. But I, I'm already anticipating the worst for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you kind of know what to expect, right? Because uh, the anime is uh, basing this off the games. Oh, or did you say it was separate from the games? No, like th this is its own storyline. But it feels like oh, okay, a continuation. Okay. Like after Volume 3, you could consider this anime Volume 4 in a way. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, that's what I feel like. It feels like, okay, we finished with all the visual novels. Let's see what happens to them after the visual novels have came to a close. And then maybe we'll see this this kitten girl in the next volume, Volume 4, if that ever comes out sometime soon. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So okay. yeah, yeah it, it's, a, it's a nice guilty pleasure anime. Once again, it's not one that I would like say, go watch it. But if you're a fan of Nekoparo though, I think you'll get a good kick out of it nonetheless. Yeah, but basically another like a zero lane situation where it's not for everyone, but for those who are familiar with it, uh, they give it a watch. Donnie says, "When are you going to be playing it?" I've already been playing it. I have the vids up on my uh, on my YouTube channel. The only one I never really completed was Volume Three, so I need to get back into that eventually. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, this genuinely feels like a continuation of all the storylines that have been out so far, though. So if you okay. if you enjoyed everything uh, Neko Power related, you'll definitely get a kick out of this one, hundred percent. Nice. All right. So All right. I think that's the best way to kind of wrap things up for tonight. Unless we had another one to talk about. Uh, okay. Uh, there is one anime I do want to talk about. I only caught up with two episodes. I did bring this up uh, briefly. Um, it's um it's an anime that we got introduced to back in anime NYC with uh, me TSS and Red Dragon Emperor. Oh, was and... it that Somali one? Yes, Somali Somali and the Forest Spirit. Okay. Now so... I have yet to watch the anime. I'm, I'm gonna wait for like maybe a few more episodes to come out before I give it a watch. Okay. Because like you know, as I mentioned before, there's just so, too much anime for me, man. <laughs> it's yeah, so yeah. hard right now to catch up to all of it. But I have to ask, though, mm -hmm. am I missing out on something great here? Um, hmm. Like, I, like it, it, I guess I should say, like, given how I, you know, enjoy certain genres, mm -hmm. like slice of life kind of fantasy kind of things, like, mm -hmm. where would you put this? Do you think this would be something that I would really enjoy? Or would you think, like, this would be something that uh, will be, like, a hit or miss for no, I mean, look, don't get me wrong. It's a great anime from what I've seen. Um, it's just that, um, like, I th okay, um, maybe it, that could be a, a little, I could be a little biased given that I haven't caught up with uh, the rest of the episodes because I believe we're only like in what? Four? Four, epi four episodes in most animes, I believe. Yeah, because like I, it started at the beginning of the year, so. Yeah. Okay, so I will say this, like, it's... It, it, I think this anime takes more of a very, very slice of life approach. Um, something that I wasn't really expecting, given that 
uh, from what I've seen the trailer, it looks like, like I don't know, like I thought I, I thought I'd be getting like, um, like how do I put this, like more of a promised Neverland approach. I'm not talking like I'm not talking about like, like that kind of dark, uh, that kind of like dark uh, drama or anything like that, right? But, mm-hmm. um, but, um, but m- maybe we'll probably get something like that in, in future episodes, but. You know, at least from these first two episodes, they take these more of a, a very slice of life approach. Um, because uh, at least from the first episode that uh, that you get an inch, that that you watch, um, so what ends up happening is that the this there's this forest golem with uh, the one that's with the kid that you see on the poster. Um, he just ha- he just happens to be a guardian of this forest and. Um, and he could, and what so happens is that he could communicate with animals. Yeah. And a, a rabbit ended up approaching him to, and asked him to go follow it. And he ended up finding this human being that was just all alone, just hiding underneath a tree bark. And from there, he just decides to take care of the kid. And, um, you know, as he was taking care of the kid, he's just, you know, basically its main goal is to help uh, find uh, find this girl's uh, parents, or find uh, or find more humans, um, you know, before a certain event come comes into place. Now, I won't give up too much spoilers because, of course, um, you know, you have you still haven't seen the episodes. But um, you know, as they were going along on their um, on their adventure, they stop by various cities, uh, they stop by various um, locations, and you're go- you're going to see that. Um, this golem is trying to better understand uh, Somali as not not not, uh, not just as a child, but as uh, as to how human behaves. Huh? Be- yeah, because one thing you, got, you you've got to understand is that humans aren't extinct in that world. So you know, um, I guess given that because they were extinct for I don't know how long, um, he's. You know, that could kind of explain as to that could kind of explain why this um, you know, this uh, forest guardian is having a hard time interpreting um, human emotions and human actions. But it's a more it's more of a father and daughter anime, if that yeah. makes any sense. Yeah. So that's just that's just my little synopsis of this anime so far. At least from what I've seen, it takes more of a slice of life approach, but. We'll see if things take a very different direction once I ca- uh, catch up with the rest of the episodes. But it's a good a- anime, but yeah, I feel like they're taking way too much of this sl- sl- slice of life approach, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. And I, yeah, I, but... I guess so eventually I'll definitely give it a shot when I can. It's like I mentioned, you know, it's it, it's really difficult to put time on a show that... When you have a dozen other ones that you're really enjoying and trying to catch up on, and also also releasing on different days as well, yeah, it really <laughs> does become difficult to kind of remember each one and then also try to add upon what you've already been watching. You know, because it's like what eight different animes I'm watching right now, so it's already becoming like uh, stacked at this point. But whenever I get yeah, the chance, like- I really got to give these kind of shows that I haven't watched a shot yet, man. Okay, no, you're good, man. It, it's it's just so weird how this season is. Uh, you know, at first you thought that there wasn't going to be uh, you know much to watch, but when you open it, but when the but when the doors open for winter 2020, there's a, there's a lot more shows that you that, that you actually end up watching than you thought you would. It, it's just one of those surprise seasons, so to say. Yeah, because it's like when we saw it, we're like, nah. No, I ain't gonna enjoy it. <laughs> and then it turns out, oh yeah, no, just, we definitely enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those seasons that catches up, that caught us off guard in terms of the amount of anime that we'll end up watching. Yeah. And man, I yeah. love every minute of it. <laughs> I love yeah. all my anime so far. I ain't mad about any of the anime that I've been uh, watching so far. I'm only mad about the decisions some studios made about certain animes no longer being acceptable via subs, man. Oof, yeah, that, that's true. Um, yeah. yeah, so I guess that's pretty much it. Um, also, we, we also got to find time for uh, for you, sir, to finish up reacting to uh, My Hero Academia. Oh, yeah, eventually I'll get into that. But right now, I think we're in like that weird uh, school phase right now, correct? 
the, the school festival arc is what we're coming to. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I think I'll be fine for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and besides, um, I, uh, I believe they. No, actually, never mind. Um. Yeah, I think I got to mix up with another anime uh, because I thought My Hero Academia was going to delay one of their episodes to like uh, February something, but I think it might, I think it's just another episode I got mixed up with. Yeah, so, never so, mind. <laughs> all righty then. So, buddy, you ready to go and wrap things up then for tonight? Yeah, let's let, let's uh, call it a night. I think we had a pretty good discussion overall. Oh uh, yeah, I just really wanted to get that whole Funimation thing out of my chest, man, because that that was the thing that aggravated the aggravated me the most out of everything this week. Oh, same here, dude. I, I think it affected a lot of people because I, I think to them it's considered one of their favorite shows of this season. Yeah, which is a surprise because you see the design and you're like, nah, it ain't gonna be anyone's favorite, and then it turns out no, that they're not to be everyone's favorite. <laughs> yep. <laughs> man but yeah so yeah, it is what it is for now let's see what um funimation does following yeah. that yeah so let's hope that you know we, we all once again next week turn uh for the better with some of the stuff and uh we hopefully continue to enjoy more episodes man because anime is always always a good thing with animation mm -hmm. you are leaving a bad example you're only helping piracy become more and more common out there so, until you get your stuff fixed, th th this is going to continue to, you know, happen, so. Right. Yeah, but for now, once again, as long as you guys are enjoying anime, that's fine by me. So, we're going to wrap things up for tonight. My name is KG Prestige. Here with me is my pal, Alpha Eevee. Once again, make sure to go and follow him over his social media at Twitter, you know, being of Alpha Eevee. So, go check him out there. You can find his link in the friends segment down below. And uh, look forward to more shenanigans on Monday's podcast of the Pokepod World, where we will be talking about the recent episode of Pokemon 2019 it's still weird to just call it pokemon i was gonna say sun and moon but it's still just pokemon uh <laughs> and of course you know other news relating to pokemon such as the new mythical pokemon that's gonna tie into the new film and the mysteries behind that and of course game freaks newest Gold decisions title. about game you know the pokemon genre and you know we're gonna definitely do our best on that so look forward to it right and uh anything else you want to add Evie? nope Let's all, right. Let wrap. all right, then we'll talk with all of you guys later in whatever video we make. Take care, everybody, and as always, have yourself an awesome day. Bye bye.